Hi, this is Tim at the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me for pricing. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com. Today we discuss an old friend. No matter how many times I encounter the Patek Philippe 5235G, I will always welcome it with a smile. And this may be our first review of the watch as the 1916 company, so we need to update the video anyway, and I'm bringing it back. So, launched in 2011 and discontinued in 2019 as the rose gold model arrived, the white gold 5235G001 regulator annual calendar measures 40.5 millimeters in diameter, 10.6 millimeters thick, and 47.8 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We will throw this watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference, and this is exactly where I imagine this watch, on my wrist. One of my favorites of all time, and you can probably see why. It's a good fit. Looking down the barrel, you can see that the lugs are inboard at the edge of my wrist. It has a relatively flat case profile and with a sloped bezel, no issues sliding underneath a dress cuff. Now, it does have rather striking lugs that are sharp, angular, and prominent, but the over-the-top view exaggerates the width of the watch, especially since I'm pulling the strap tight. It's a stiff, unbroken-in factory fresh strap. It will soften up as it ages in. Now this watch features a lovely vintage style Patek Philippe logo like you might have seen over the arch of a Patek Philippe dealer during the 1940s, 50s, or 60s and that buckle design is specific to this watch. On the reverse side you can see this is a white gold Patek Philippe pin buckle. The case designed to echo the famous 3448 and 3450 perpetual calendars, cylindrical case profile, conical bezel, sharp stepped angular lug profiles. This watch is rife with Patek's own history. We have the Calatrava cross, which is the symbol of the brand. We have brushed profiling, and you can see that those lugs are rather dramatically stepped out from the case band. These are not blended Calatrava lugs. The tops of the lugs, the squared off ends of the lugs, and the bezel are all of high polish. You can see the bezel is somewhat stepped in from the case band, and the case hood actually has a bevel. The flank of the bezel has a rather short sheer bevel of its own, and then it gives way to the conical profile that flattens out just before it hits a rather dramatically cambered and boxed sapphire section. Now, taking a look at the dial, there's a lot that stands out, but what I always call out first is the fact that the logo and the city of origin here engraved, not printed. The dial with a vertical steel-like satin brushing, almost like you're looking at a DeLorean in stainless steel or a Tesla Cybertruck. And then we have a lighter tone of the metal underneath the minutes track outboard. You can see this is more of a silver gray, and then this track is more of a silver white. Everything that's printed on this dial is printed in blue. You can see it is an aperture style annual calendar, which I love. The aperture a lot easier to read than radial counters. It is a regulator which means you have independent displays of seconds, minutes, and hours. And then you'll also note that it features a hacking system here, so I can actually stop the seconds and synchronize. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that the windows for the calendar have been lightly beveled so that there's a progressive slope down from the plane of the dial to the disc. They're not sheer cuts straight through. There's nothing crude about them whatsoever. You can see that both the second sub-register and the hours register are slightly countersunk. They have a little bit of concentric patterning in them, so they have these concentric, finely grooved rings radiating at, from the center, and then they feature radially arrayed Arabic numerals. All the hands are fired blue and gorgeous. And you can see that the registers have a different tone, texture, and color than the rest of the dial. Even the discs for the calendar have been printed blue on white or blue on silver. And of course, it is an annual calendar, so it need be reset only once a year during the jump from 
February to March, the annual calendar created by Patek Philippe with the 5035 back in 1996. It was a Patek original. On the reverse side, an all-new generation of micro rotor movement. This is not even vaguely based on the 240. The 240 is a small movement of around 27 millimeters that dates back to the 70s. This caliber, the 31260 REGQA for regulator Cantiem Annuel, is a movement created just for this model and it debuted on this model in 2011 it's large 33 millimeters in diameter it fills the case back you've got ceramic rotor bearings for the rotor as well as its reduction wheel and it is a 22 carat mass super dense gold for efficient winding of the 48 hour power reserve this watch is adjusted in six positions it has a free sprung patek philippe gyromax style balance so all the adjustments are done by moving eccentric masses on the spokes of the balance wheel. It's both very accurate to adjust and very shock tolerant. There's also an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. And I don't know how well you could see it, but if you look, you could see the anchor and the escape wheel just below the balance are sort of iridescent electric blue. Those are unlubricated silicon. And so this watch incorporates all the silicon technologies of the advanced research series, except the Gyromax SI hybrid metallic silicon balance. So here we have a quirky beat rate unique to the model of 23,040 vibrations per hour. And that's all down to the unique escapement system, which improves performance as in between services. So the idea being that because these components aren't lubricated, particularly pallet stone lubrication, tends to be one of the limiting factors in the interval between services. And so by adding a system that requires no lubrication, the watch will keep better time after one, two, three years in between services. And then you can see that we have a single barrel layout and we have a sort of crescent in the profile of the bridges. See how there's a curvature? The curvature from each bridge flowing into the next. This movement doesn't just have fine finish, although you could see it has that in abundance. This movement has architecture, which relates to the size, the shape, and the relative positioning of the bridges. And then elements of finish include broad stripes, exceptionally broad stripes, and usually broad set of stripes for a Patek watch. Then you can see that we have broad polished bevels. And while we don't have interior angles, we do have some outward points that are worthwhile where bevels come to a point. We have beveling within the jewel sinks, a partridge eye treatment. We have black polished screw heads with chamfered slots and circumference. And as you can see, several different sizes of engine turned perlage on the base plate with locating pegs used to locate the bridges on the base plate polished on their heads. All screws, of course, black polished on their tops with chamfered slots and circumference and satination on all of the wheels. All this with a snap case back, water resistant down to 30 meters. So dress watch water resistance. If you love this watch, and I can't see why you wouldn't, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Oh, fun fact, you'll probably love to know that this 29 jewel movement is guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds a day as serviced from the factory. The more you know, again, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing.